I hit, we're good. Sorry about that. Uh, maybe that was the internet. You guys are chiming in with your cold temps. Yeah, it's uh, 19 here, I think. High today of 38. January 16th. <laughs> In the day of our Lord. <laughs> My son's birthday. Yay. Happy birthday, Ryan. Uh Hi, I'm Becky, and you are in the Situation Room on Power Tools with Thread, and it's really early, and I'm still just working on my first cup here. <laughs> my goodness, we've got lots of folks here already this morning in the chat, so um, this is a great time for you to spend an hour in your sewing room, uh, tidying, sewing, you know, sorting thread putting all those spools back that need to go back from your last embroidery project, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And uh, we're, we've got a kitchen in our situation room. This is a virtual stitching retreat and the kitchen's just on the other side of the room. And uh, it's got, I think hot chocolate. I saw coffee and I'm sure there's donuts over there. So this is just for fun. You guys, no other website to jump around to. Okay. Yeah, he's 38 today. Yeah, 38. So I'll have to call him later on. I love those fun little Blue Mountain birthday cards that you can send that are the little groundhogs singing. <laughs> Throw a gift card on there and it's good, right? So it's great. Yeah. But, um, oh, good. There's cake now for Ryan's birthday. That's great. See, this is just a wonderful place to be. <laughs> Are you going to stay in bed and watch the situation room? You can do that too, Shelly. Whatever. That's fine. Stay bundled up. Uh, last night and the night before are the first times that I've ever slept under my chicken salad quilt. So it was cold enough that I had to um, um, bundle up the blankets on the bed. That's for sure. So all my Texas girls are in the house. I've got McKinney, uh, Burleson, Nacogdoches. Yeah, there's one uh, shirts. She comes in here. So it's great to see everybody here this morning. So yesterday I spent a lot of time in front of the camera. On with my internet picture. Okay, so it, my internet is not acting. There we go. My connection is tenuous at best. The little port is broken. So every time I touch this thing with my knee, sorry about that, guys. But, uh, and then I had a private lesson with a lady at 10 a.m. And then at one o'clock, I was uh, finishing up the Kimber Bell mini table runner. So look at this one. Didn't this turn out adorbs? This is so cute. Turned out super cute. When I do these mini table runner uh, sew alongs with you guys, we'll do, uh, we did like one, one block on the single needle. The next day is a block on the multi needle. And then the last day is putting it all together. And I'm doing this every month on the uh, second and the second Thursday and Friday. And then the third Monday is the final day. So these kits come complete with all of the embellishments. So see how her crown is a uh, glitter vinyl and his little hat is like a pleather, a black pleather. And then um, it had the technique of putting foam in for a little puffy and it comes complete with the backing as well. So, and I put my my little hanging triangle point on there. So you only have to stitch one little, one little point instead of having to stitch a whole hanging sleeve. So that's kind of cool. So I got that done and that was a lot of fun. Thank you all of you who watched and you were there. Yeah, I'm, I've got record Michelle. Thank you. You're, you're on it. <laughs> I appreciate that. So uh, <clears throat> that was a lot of fun to do. And then I wanted to show you, oh, I've got some uh, comments that I need to respond to from, I don't need to, but I'm going to from yesterday and some questions. You should get your trimmer by George and Keith Ripper. Yay. Awesome. Good for you, Jasmine. 
Um, yeah, if you're interested in making these with us, um, the links to the kits and everything are below. So um, those are my affiliate links. I've got to declare that by the FCC rules. So I'm always very upfront with you guys about that. Um, let's see. Oh, I didn't bring my glasses. I'm going to have to deal with it today. I'm not getting, oh, I've got those right there. But it said, um, so we talked quite a bit about uh, doing a little bit of maintenance on your own machines before you run them into the dealer, you know, or the shop or whatever. And you guys, the thing that, that, that started with being able to adjust the tension in your bobbin cases. And that's what we were talking about was adjusting tension in the bobbin case, right? <clears throat> Wife of chief says, and this is a comment on my blog or on the, below the video. I love how you said we have to be self-sufficient. So true. Spoken like a true military wife and <laughs> spouse, right? Especially when the machines are so big and heavy. And if hubby isn't available, how do you get it to the shop? And then, like you say, if they're backed up, you will be without your machine for too long. So, yeah, um, that those are the considerations you kind of have to think about if you're going to be doing your own uh, you know, maintenance per se. And, and I'm not talking about taking the machine apart, you guys. Okay. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about just adjusting the, the tension on your bobbin case or something, know your limitations. Okay. Don't dive headfirst into something, but I got another comment like this. I work at a shop and the problems we see when people start messing with their machines because they think they know what they're doing is unbelievable. They look at YouTube, take stuff apart, lose pieces, and then end up with a worse mess. We're not always out to take people's money, but so often it will cost the customer more than they had if they had just brought it in and asked. And that's true too, okay? So I want to let you guys know, I'm not advocating for you to take your machines apart, okay? Don't be doing that. <laughs> you know, I'm somewhat mechanically inclined and my brain thinks that way and it doesn't bother me to take certain pieces off of the machine and dig around and look for the bit of a needle I can't find that got broken okay but you guys know your limitations definitely know your limitations I don't and and the the shops are not always out to to so just take your money, you guys. I hope that did not come across that way. Okay. I don't want to do that. But um, if adjusting your Bob intention is another, that's definitely, you know, as a user, you should try that first. So I just wanted to put that out there anyway. Um, and then I had talked about how my long arm, I broke a needle on it and then I replaced the needle and I couldn't get it to pick up the bobbin thread. And so Betty Boop mentioned yesterday, maybe you threw it out of time. And I was like, oh no. So I watched some videos on how to change the timing, how to adjust the timing on a long arm machine. And um, I, not just one, many of them. And I was texting back and forth with my maintenance guy, my tech who comes out here because I've got ginormous machines that I'm not going to haul around. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of walked me through a couple of things, but he asked me, did you put the needle in all the way? Because I was able to take the face plate off and I could see, I took a Sharpie and I marked the center of the scarf, which is that little indentation in the back of the needle on the long arms. And then I put a Sharpie mark exactly where the hook was grazing the scarf, which was like a couple of millimeters above the center of the scarf. I'd watched enough videos from dealers, okay? Not Joe Blows, but dealers to know that if the hook doesn't graze the inside center of the scarf to pick up the bobbin thread, it's not gonna make the loop. And I was like, okay, so let me look at this. So I sent Jason pictures of that needle and the marks on the needle. And that's when he said, did you put the needle in all the way? And I said, I think I did, but I checked it out and I had not. 
So when I replace the new needle, this time, instead of using my fingers, I use one of those, it's a it's kind of a clamp or it's got a loop that you can put the needle down in a little loop and then shove it up, you know, firmly and then tighten the screw. And then I did a test on it and it worked like a champ. So messing with the timing in my long arm, uh, those, this long, these, that King Quilter 2 from Sewing Machines Plus is very, very precisely timed. And that's not something I want to mess with. So uh, I knew my limitations on that. And I knew if the timing was off, I was going to have to have Jason out here to fiddle with it because I'm not going to do it. So anyway, <clears throat> I just want to share that with you guys. Okay. Uh, somebody asked the questions, do Kimber Bell's cut files, the SVG cut files, do they run true to size? And we've, we've addressed this before. Um, you got in the, in this month, not, you didn't get the birds cause the birds, you needed the extra fabric to go over the puffy, but the L, the V, the E and, and some of the hearts. Okay. Uh, all, and the wings on the birds, they had cut files for that. My experience with Kimberbell and Sweet Pea is no. They are not true to size. However, I may not have the most recent release of whatever it is that they're doing, and they may have changed things. So, uh, you know, my experience is normally when I, if I put it into the scan and cut to cut out the fabric without any kind of fiddling with it and in software at all, then you would just hit plus two. But here's what you can do. Just hoop yourself a piece of stabilizer. You don't need any fabric, just stabilizer. Okay. And run the placement line for that particular piece. Just one piece So you only need one to test. Okay. Just run the placement line for one piece right on your stabilizer and then cut it out on your scan and cut true to size or your Cricut or whatever you have, cut it out true to size and put it on, see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, plus one, plus two until it works for you. Okay. So then you can just, or what you can do is you can, you know, in your hoop, you can run, if your hoop's large enough, you can run a couple of different, like you could run the, the L or the V or the E like two or three times. Okay. In your stabilizer, just the placement line, move the hoop, run it again, move the hoop, run it again, and then cut at different sizes. So copy and paste your, your little shape like three times. And the second time you do it, hit a plus one. And the third time you do it, hit a plus two, cut all three out and see which one fits. But write, write, write on your fabric with a pen or a marker or something. So you know, which is which, right. And then see which one fits. That's a really easy way to test the net in here without having to, um, can I explain the difference between the Kimber Bell clear blue tiles and the block to block? Are they the same? Kay, yesterday's video, we spent a lot of time on that. If you would be so kind when we're finished to go back and take a look. I pulled out the clear blue tiles and talked a lot about them. But in a nutshell, the clear blue tiles are designed to be fully enclosed designs that nestle close to one another so that they look like one pass of all over background quilting on a big project and the block by block designs are digitized to have a frame around them to give you cut lines. Okay. So that you can cut out a single block and then you put all the blocks together block by block to create your final product. I hope that makes sense. Well, hi, Cindy. It's your first situation room during the live. Welcome. Glad you made it. So how do I make multiple sizes? Kathy, uh, you can, in your scan and cut, you just highlight the object and click object edit and it'll jump. And then it has a button that has a plus sign and that's where you make multiples. So you make, make a couple of multiples, move them around, and then you can touch them individually and hit the stretchy button and upsize them. And it, it's pretty fun, pretty easy to do. Oh, good. Heidi's redoing her sewer room. Do I have a video that goes over the construction of my design wall? Eh, no. <laughs> 
The design wall is two pieces of four by eight foam insulation board from Home Depot. And then it's covered in two layers of white batting and hubby put a uh, cord around all the way around it. So it's long. I, I wish it was taller, but he wasn't into uh, taking apart the bottom half of the barn wood because this is reclaimed barn wood down here. This is original to the first owner of the house, second owner. I think I'm third, but yeah. All right. You guys look like you're moving around here. Did I miss any questions? I just wanted to check with you guys and tell you that. So, okay. All right. So let's see what's next. <laughs> Y'all, the black light trick of looking at white on white. And if you're new, you can take a black light. I've shown this many, many, many times, but just quickly. And you have a white on white fabric. Okay, you can see the white on white print using a black light and the back side of it, you cannot see the print. So that's how you know which is which when you're working with a white on white fabric. But I, I tell everybody, don't shine this at the base of your toilet. <laughs> you don't want to know what's there. <laughs> and one of y'all made a comment that you, you, uh, you said, or you sent me an email or it was a comment, I can't remember. You said not to shine this at the, at, in your bathroom and I did, and I was horrified. And then I showed my cleaning lady because she ordered one and she got a pack of two. So she kept one for herself for a sewing room. And then the other one, um, she, uh, she showed the trick to her cleaning lady and her cleaning lady was horrified. So she gave her the second one and now she uses it in all of her homes that she cleans. <laughs> this will show you when your boys are messy. Okay. Just FYI, it will do that. So, uh, Betty, I get my organ needles on Amazon. I've got them in my sewing and embroidery favorites, both of those. And I use the 7511 EBBRs. So, anyway, um, got your fi PQ1500. How often do you need to oil it if you use it every day? Carrie, I oil mine when it starts sounding like it needs oil. That's one of those things my dad told me, listen to your car. It'll always tell you what it needs. Listen to the machine. So just get used to sewing with it. I'm sure it's got some oil in it right out of the factory, but um, I oil it when it sounds like it. So, oh, it's your first time, Kathy, to make the life too. Good for you. We're glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Made by Margie says, we don't need a black light to tell us how messy boys are. But let's see. Okay, y'all were asking me or let me know yesterday, the Double the Love fabric kits at Two Chicks Quilting uh, are sold out. So the, the light colorway is sold out. She thinks they had like four of the dark colorway kits left. They didn't get into the shop yesterday because they were going to, because of the freeze. You know, they shut the roads down and all that. So, um, well, hi, Christy. You're a first time or two. We got lots of newbies here in the morning. That's great. The black light flashlight dot is in my Amazon store. I've got it linked below in the description box, way down at the bottom. But then my my Amazon shop is broken into um, <clears throat> it's broken into like sewing room, embroidery favorites, scan and cut. I've got different things, and sometimes I put them in different places. But um, y'all had mentioned, so I just want to let you know they're going to get in there today. I think maybe later on today and uh, take a look and see what they've got left and get some more cut if they can. So you need to find out. Oh, okay. All right, Cheryl, we need you back in your sewing room. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Let's see. Hi, Maynard, long arm quilting, first time or two. Well, glad you're here. Um, let's see what else. I needed to put some cards on there. Oh, you guys had wanted to know how to open the designs in an app because uh, I opened a embroidery design and when I double clicked on it in brilliance launched my software launched and uh, my, my buddy Katie, she comes in here all the time and she, uh, she actually taught this old dog a new trick of a very easy way to do that. So I'm going to do a blog post on it. 
So <clears throat> today I wanted to get some more of the American Pie blocks put together. This is the quilt. This is American Pie by QT Fabrics. I've been working on this for months and all of the blocks are finished and now I'm just adding the sashing. So that's what I was gonna do today with you guys here. You're chasing a husky in the snow, Glory. Good for you. Uh, oh, neat. Shannon, this is interesting because a lot of people ask me how to view the live chat on replay. I have no control over that. To the right of the comments, there are two dots. Swipe the dots and you have the option to click live comments and not just comments after. Oh, good. Thank you so much. That's very helpful. Very helpful. Thank you. If you're new to Power Tools with Thread, click the subscribe and thumbs up. That's great. You Thanks. Oh, Didi's on it. She's my marketing manager. <laughs> Y'all are funny. So I am ready for February with my, um, my little mini quilt. Ready. I'm going to take this one down. I just kept it up here to show you guys. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take this off and put my snow me's back up for the rest of the month. Yeah. I'm excited to see it finished too, Julianne. So, um, now that my King Quilter two is back in business, alfalfa, now that he's back in business, I was able to, uh, run the plumb line to put my top on straight last night. And I have got a quilt, uh, the top of it basted. So it's just a little Christmas quilt, but I've got that ready to go. Today, after we get done, is, uh, you know, yes, um, what adhesive spray do I use or do I use any? Carmen wants to know. Uh, Carmen, I prefer KK2000 from Sulky. That's my favorite. Um, it's a little pricey. They're all a little pricey, but uh, if I use an adhesive spray, that's the one I use. So, and I'm kind of out of it. I need to get some more. I've got like two cans, three cans of it floating around here and all of them are. Um, enabler group alert. Yes. Okay. You're taking the needle off Ruth, your PR 1050 before a new project. So that's great. Absolutely. You got to get in there on those big ones, those big machines. You got to get in there. <clears throat> oh, yeah. My girlfriend's quilt shop has a new club. I don't know what to expect about that either. I don't know what that is. I saw that and I was like, what are they doing? So. <laughs> you better hurry on the KK2000. It'll be gone. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to show you guys another thing I don't believe I've ever shared with you on how to how I keep track of my blocks and sew them in the correct order. Okay. So, oh, let me see. I need this. I'm going to take these three. Okay. When my blocks are on the design wall, I number them by, you, you all probably do this too, but I number them by row and column. And this helps me keep straight which blocks get sashing in the middle and which ones don't if it's an outside piece. So this, <clears throat> I write, I use my little friction fine liner marker. Okay. That's an iron away. I know. Well, y'all, I hurt my ankle yesterday. I was wearing the wrong shoes for most of the day. I had on my isotone of slippers instead of my, um, my Crocs I always wear, and y'all, my right tendon on the back of my ankle that wraps around my, it's killing me. It is excruciatingly painful, and I'm moving slow, and I'm like, don't move my foot. <laughs> my husband made fun of me all, all night last night, so it'll be fine. Um, Frida found something. I don't know. I wasn't eating in here yesterday, so she didn't find a goldfish. They're sleeping in the house with us now. It's too cold out on the back patio. All right. so. I don't know if you can see it. See, it's that's a two, believe it or not. It's kind of a Z looking thing. It says two, one. So that's the second row in the first column. And then the next block, okay, there's two, two. Second row, second column. 
All right. And then the last one, of course, it has two, three. But I'll go through and I'll number all of the blocks once I get them on the design wall and I figure out exactly where I want them, then I number them like that. These numbers will iron away. But, oh, Biofreeze, I think I have some of that, Cassie. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I keep them straight and I don't put sashing where it doesn't go. So... Y'all, my foot will be fine by the end of the day. It's even better now than it was when I woke up this morning. I took some Motrin. I'll be okay. Yeah, I'm a tough old bird. You you take a photo on your phone. That's a really good idea, Patty. Oh, no. You fell. Did you fall? Dawn? Oh, no. You were able to laugh when you got up. You know what? You're lucky you didn't bust your pumpkin. People died like that. It's terrible. So I'm just going to be stitching some, uh, you know, and that's one of those things where you get a bruise later on. Shows up on, you know, next Wednesday or whatever. So I'm checking my, I'm checking on my black light. Make sure I got this thing right. Twice. <laughs> because I don't want to sew it wrong. Got to go to the chiropractor. Is the handy quilter camera just for the infinity? I don't know. One of you handy quilter um, experts would have to let them know. I'm not sure. Oh, so I got to get this done. I said I was going to do some yesterday and I didn't. And I'm sewing from this side so I can see those points I have to hit. And what I'll do, let me zoom you in so you can see how I do this. Because these things, you know, this is like the final stretch and it's easy to get lazy and not do it right. Oh. So what I do is I go into the very, I'll take a pin and go into the very, very tip of that point and put it in there like that. So I've got a pin. Let's see, I dropped my sashing in the point. Okay. And I do that with all the points that I have to meet on the block. There's nothing worse than tipping a point on sashing when you've worked so hard to get the whole block right. Okay. So where that point is now, I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to draw exactly where that pin is coming out. Yeah. And sometimes my seam allowances go side to side. And they don't make my life easy. But right where, because sometimes it's not always on the fabric. There might be a tiny little fold. All right. Now I can get this take these out. Okay. There. But that's just an easy way to figure out. And I, I want those points exact. I don't want them tipped and I don't want them. Okay. Oh, there's hot cinnamon rolls and coffee in the kitchen. Thank you, Carrie Quilts. You're so nice. Yeah, you yes, shoot a question to Adam Sofun. He's a handy quilter educator. I'm not super savvy with handy quilters. But I'm looking forward to getting savvy with the pro stitcher. Now, y'all, <clears throat> when it comes to me using software like that, okay, I'm going to pin this just like this. I don't, I don't get to national educator level on that stuff. I, I have no desire to do that. I know what I want to do with it, and I'll eventually get to where I can do things with it. But I, am, I have no desire whatsoever to be this master, you know, free motion quilter like Bernie or anything. That's, that's not how I do that. Oh, I'm going to change my foot out. I was doing um, binding yesterday. 
so my jam is to figure out how to use the thing to be able to run pantographs on it and quilt around applique. That's my sole purpose in life. But I'm, I don't, um, you know, all that quilting in that negative space, you, you'll probably notice I don't do a lot of negative space quilts. That's not my thing. Harriet's a handy quilter educator, so Harriet might know about that infinity. There's a lot of very talented and smart people on this channel, you guys, that are way smarter than me. Way, way smarter. So... All right. Let's see here. Let me see if I if my theory works on this. I'm just going to get this row done today. Today I'm playing with crow stitch. This machine just improved my accuracy of my stitching so, so much. So it's worth it to me to piece on this machine. Here we go. Nailed it. See that? That one is right, and that's right, and that's right. Those are perfect. So that's why I do that. I, I run a pin in from the front out the back so I can exactly see where those tips are, okay? This is how you do that. Love it. Okay. Pretty sure that was two one. <laughs> Watch me sew the wrong thing. Yep. Oh, you brought homemade tortillas, Shannon. Sharon, nice. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'll grab some scrambled eggs and bacon and make myself a taco. That sounds good this morning, doesn't it? Yeah, this was two one. Okay. Very cool. Thank you all. So that's just kind of the method to my madness on that one. Now I'm going to sew another strip to this one. This is 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Wait, I'm not ready for that yet. Put that in right on that tip. I cheat so bad, you guys, if you want to call this cheating. This is how it, this is how it goes so that it looks right. Any little thing will help. Let's see. So that's how I mark it, just like that. I've got myself a little landing strip to show me exactly where I need to hit. Okay. Make sure I got that. I just cannot tell on this stuff. Gosh. 
this fabric hasn't been too bad about shredding. I don't want to have like a blue or a red thread come through on the white and the long arming. That's miserable. And I decided for my backing. So I was thinking about this in the middle of the night, literally. I need a backing, of course. And I don't want white. But there is um, a gray check. And I thought about either this gray check or if I could find the same shade of gray in a buffalo check, that would look cool. You think? And I like that because that way, because um, if I use the red or the blue with the dots on the back, the white, I neither need to use two color threads and I'm not savvy enough. Again, I know my limitations. I'm not savvy enough with the King Quilter just yet because I haven't played with it at all. I've never done. Yeah, I like the gray check. I think that's, thank you, Michelle. So <clears throat> I think I want to do the gray so I can use white thread top and bottom, right? Until I get, I in my, uh, when I, in my gray 21X Elite, I could use um, different color threads, no problem, because I had quilted many, many quilts on that machine, and it works great, and I was real comfortable with it. This one, I haven't yet, so until the machine and I, you know, kumbaya and all that, and we are good together, then I'm going to be, I'm going to stick with white on white until I feel completely comfortable with this machine. Hopefully it doesn't take long. Man, it stitches so nice. So, so nice. Okay. I love it that I had to cut my strips to 16 and a half and they're all fitting exactly, which means I nailed it on the block sizing. You can't go wrong with that method, you guys. You just cannot go wrong. See that? Perfect, 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 perfect. Love it. Yeah, Jan's looking forward to getting comfortable with her long arm too. So, you know, it just takes some time to play with it. I watched uh, several videos. I've watched some uh, handy quilter educators that, play with the quilt path, not quilt path, that's APQS, um, pro stitcher, you know, and that's one of those things where I write down what they say, stop the video, write it down, stop the video, write it down, stop the video, and just get it step by step by step. And there's a couple of different ways to get where you're going. But the, the thing with the software <clears throat> is understanding the order of the process of how the software thinks. Right. So the black light is so you can see the right side of the fabric using uh, for white on white. I hope that helps. Yeah. Oh, Michelle makes bacon in the air fryer. That's a good idea. You know, I watched this channel, this cooking channel called Feeding the Birds. Love her. She's great. It's B-Y-R-D-S. Their last name is Bird. And she's got a lot of basic recipes that you can doctor up and make your own. And um, she popped some chicken breasts into the air fryer the other day. And I looked at that and I was like, 
<gasps> what is that? Oh my gosh. It was like a Kasori, I think. That's on its way. That ought to get here today. And I have an air fryer, a big one from Instant Pot, but this one's even bigger. And it's a multi toaster oven and all this other stuff. So we're fixing to have a new kitchen appliance, but I cook at home. I cook a lot. So, yeah. Yep, that's how you do it, KJ. You watch video, stop, write it down, and all that. So, you repeat the question. You saw an American Pie quilt top sample made up, and the material seemed thin. Is yours that way too? Linda, it seems to be fine. Um, these, these are the basics. This is QT's basics line. No, um, they're, they're pretty heavy. Uh, you know, they have a different feel than Moda, but they're as thick. Look, you can't see through the white. That's not opaque. I mean, it's opaque. It's not, you know, it's not see-through at all. So, Oh, Julianne, you haven't tried an air fryer? Girl, that's going to change your world. Let me tell you what. Everything. Love it. Use it almost every day. Yeah, uh, these fabrics are great. I don't have a problem with it at all. So how do you tell which leaders to put the So Tights Magnums on? Uh, Emily, you've got a grace machine, so you're going to put it on the take-up rail and the belly bar. Because I always floated my top when I had a grace. So basically it's going to be on the leaders that are holding both ends of the backing. Okay. Hope that helps. You always do bacon in the air fryer. I hadn't thought of that. And we only eat turkey bacon. I only make real bacon for, um, you know, I, last time I made real bacon was New Year's Day to put it into my black eyed peas. So. I don't want a bigger kitchen for all my gadgets, Aaron. My kitchen's small and I like it that way. So I don't have to walk eight miles to put the dishes away from the dishwasher. I don't like doing that. OK, so let's see where we're at here was this was two, two. I know this one goes in the center of the quilt. So let me stitch <clears throat> two one to two two. Let me put my glasses back on. Well, hi, Mary. Glad you're here. Thanks for popping in. Do I have a link to the lights I use for filming? The tall ones are on a tripod with a black cover. D, uh, <clears throat> So, no, not underneath, I don't. Chicken thighs. Oh, yeah. So, I don't have a link to them. They, I couldn't figure out how to put them together. They don't come with instructions, and I had to give them to Keith. He took half an afternoon to put them together. Uh, they're called softbox lights. So you can take a look on Amazon. I got them on Amazon. So just take a look. Softbox lights. Oh, really? Your, your heart doctor said if you were going to eat bacon, eat bacon. Well, I don't eat bacon because of my heart. I eat bacon because of my waistline. I mean, I'd eat turkey bacon because of my waistline. I just got into the habit of it when we were on Weight Watchers back in 22. So, and I just try to kind of stick with that. But so like when I make hash browns, frozen hash browns, I'll put the, the hash browns on the, on the rack and spray them with uh, olive oil spray. Not that way. You're not dumping olive oil in a pan. You use a lot less oil and really decrease your fat intake that way. You turn this and bring this down. Here we go. American pie is looking. Thank you, free spirit. I appreciate that. You mentioned oiling. How much oil and where do you put it? Patty, on top of this machine, there are a couple of little holes that have little crisscrosses in them. They're little plastic crisscrosses. 
Those are designed to diffuse the oil and make it spread out as it drops. I put one drop in each one of those holes. And what that does is it, it oils that rod that runs from over here on the motor to over here. There's another little hole up here and this hole drops oil down onto the take up lever mechanism. And then there's another hole. You've got two right here that are screw holes to put a seam gauge. And there's another hole on top of that. And that right there oils the basket that the, um, the bobbin is in. And then you can oil the hook down inside from in the bobbin area. That's what I do. So I hope that helps. Yeah. Get the uncured bacon and cook it in the air fryer. Pam, I, I'm not a fan of uncured stuff. It doesn't taste the same. And um, I like curing. It's full of salt. Salt's good for you. So helps you makes your kidneys happy and keeps your potassium level straight. Y'all, I got to tell you guys, <laughs> I know doctors love to tell you not to eat salt, keep your blood pressure down. Some machines do not need to be oiled. Made by Margie is right. That is right. They don't need to be oiled. Like, like uh, this, this one right here, my NQ3700D Gypsy, she doesn't need to be oiled. The parts that are in that are plastic and they don't need to be oiled and they're hardy, sturdy, high grade plastics, no oil required. This machine is almost industrial and it's got metal parts in it. And anytime you do metal on metal, you need to oil it, okay? Yeah, too little salt is as bad as as much salt. That's right, too much salt. So I was a kid and big Star Trek fan. And I don't know if y'all remember that episode where they, they had this creature that would, and it looked like a lady, but she would get the dispensable crew member behind a rock and put her fingers on him and suck all the salt out of his body and he died. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm never not going to eat salt. <laughs> yeah. And the doctors took my dad off salt. He ended up getting a tumor on his kidney, messed with his potassium levels. It was bad. So all things in moderation, my friends. I'm not a doctor. Don't listen to me. You do what your doctor tells you. So, oh, you were piddling around and almost missed it, Candace. That's okay. You can watch the free run. All right. Hempler's English cut bacon is great on Weight Watchers from Sam's Club. Ah, okay. I might look at that and see if I can get it. I like Sam's very much. I don't know where I'm at. I'm doing something wrong here. What am I doing? I'm talking with y'all. Now you got to watch this. See these little phrase? Those blue threads can show through. So when you see those, you know, you want to, you want to clip those up. Don't pull them because you can weaken things. Just trim them up and do yourself a favor and never get, don't go dunk and try to get it. Up. Don't do that. <laughs> you'll, you'll shake things every which way and then you'll be cleaning up more than you thought. So do your long armor a favor and trim those down if you can. I try to do it when I, when I see it. So no, you don't oil the Solaris or the Luminaire. Those machines don't require oil. oil. You only oil industrial machines that are metal on metal. The Solaris, the, I think only the, the baby lock, rendition of this one which was used to be called the jane they named it something different they changed the name of it nope that bobbin case in the solaris is plastic all of the gears inside that thing are plastic you do not need to oil it there we go that's what i'm doing
Bernina's go through oil. Okay. Jane is the accomplished now. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I'm not savvy on baby lock names. Okay. I'm doing the Sweet Pea Heart Table Runner on the 23rd of January at 10 a.m. And more kits are going to be cut in, I think, if they've got the fabric. You guys bought them out. you got to be quick around this bunch. Oh, some of y'all. Oh, if you broke a needle in the bobbin case, D, be sure to smooth out that little hole if it left a hole you want to smooth that out no i don't i don't i have a quattro which is like the dream to scotty dog don't oil that one nope only the metal industrial machines Man, this one's way down there. Are metal industrial machines hardier? Yes, very much. Yeah. But this is just a straight stitch. You're not going to be doing any kind of embroidery on this. Yeah, they're designed to, to be that way. Okay. There's that one, that one, and that one. I'm three for three. Yay! Oh, Frida, using pre-cuts and double the love is a fantastic use of those things because it's so scrappy. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, it will be cute in alternative colors. Why not, right? Okay. This is turning out just beautiful. Just beautiful. So that turned out really good. Look at that together. Even Steven, right? You don't want one that's got a point higher than its neighbor. Perfect. You're going to love that. What day was the explanation on how to change a stitch order and brilliance for the placement lines for applique? Debbie, that was on Friday. That was day two for multi-needle. We spent like the first 40 minutes or so, 30 minutes going over that in and brilliance talking about that. Um, you can... You can search on my channel for color sort, or you can just search in YouTube color sort for in brilliance and some of my videos will pop up and I explain how to do that. So thank you all. Yeah. So I've got uh, one more to put on here. It goes on this end. Again, I've got these numbered. And yeah, I wonder if somebody just made it with cheap fabrics, you know, because people will do that. They'll use their own. You can print the manual for Brilliance on their website. You can also go up to help in the very top. Click on help and go to the index. Type in a keyword like color sort and hit enter or double click and it'll pop up all the little chapters. To talk about it. Okay. Two, three. This is it. Which side do I want to sew? They're all the same. I think I'll sew this side. Right? I'll sew this side. Oh, wait a minute. Does it matter? Does it matter? It does not. Okay.
All right. Scotty, I think the Quattro came out before the Dream Machine. He was trying to sell you something else. Yeah, Patty's got that right about the gold mat. You guys, that's only for fabric with no substrate on it. Thank you, Michelle. As a general guide, how much larger than your project should your backing be with quilt on an embroidery machine? So that's a really good question. Um, she's talking about doing like Juju's end to end or the or edge to edge. And then the um, if you're going to do clear blue tiles or something like that. So what I do is I will make. You don't have to do backing necessarily. You can do it with just stabilizer. Uh, you just need enough stabilizer in the hoop so that the far edge of the quilt is going to get caught by, is going to get stitched on. And if it's too far over to the edge, it won't. So I'll usually do, I'll, I will sandwich another piece of stabilizer in along the edge and along the top on the sides and the bottom and let it hang out about that much. Okay. And that's going to allow that. Then you can get it where you need it to go. And that works. So, and then when I tape the edges down, I only tape within a quarter of an inch of the edge of the fabric on the top and the sides, and maybe even the back, if you need to do that, if your backing is not big enough. Okay. But you want to stay within that quarter inch because those stitches that go over the edge and even, it's fine if it stitches out onto that extra stabilizer, that's no problem. But when you go to peel it up or cut the stabilizer away, you can pull those stitches out if you, with the tape, if it's, you know, if you try to take the tape out. So I tend to, um, I tend to just leave the tape in the binding. I don't fiddle with it. If you turn, if you zig the gold mat, does it turn it into a regular mat? I would think so. Yeah. Y'all, I'm loving that zig even better than the uh, out of the package new. It just seems to hold that zig holds the uh, that just holds that heat and bond light. Oh, this is going to be what on earth is going on here? This is one of those seams I pressed open. It's hard to see where it. Oh, I'm gonna have to do my best on that. I don't, I don't have faith in that one. Okay. Okay. I'm ready to sew this on. Oh gosh, you guys, our hour is up. 58 minutes in. This has been a sew day, has it not? You guys are just all having a good conversation all there by yourselves. That's fantastic. Twenty seven in Southern Louisiana, yeah. Caught Quattro, does it have the ability for me to design and save? Yeah, it does. I know, guys, our hours up. They're all no. <laughs> I'm gonna sew this last block on this row, and we'll call it good. Mission accomplished for me to get this done today. Yeah, I know you guys have animals to take care of. Keith moved the chicken water bowl into the coop. So they had water all day. They didn't like to come out of the chicken house, the chicken coop yesterday. They stayed inside pretty much. They've got a heat lamp in there. So he took pity on them and threw, um, I had a bag of old lettuce that had to go. Restickifies, is that a word? I like that.
This is my least favorite part of quilting is sewing these big blocks together. I hope I hit that. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'll take it. Oh, man, I tipped that one a little bit. So there's the red and white. That worked good. There's my center. That worked good. My gray. I tipped it one stitch. Yep. Let's see, how much does that bother me? Oh, quite a bit. I'll fix it. <laughs> well, all right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for taking uh, your time out of your day to spend it with me. I love you guys. And um, you guys stay inside, so get some stuff done. It's a good time to stay in and stay warm, all right? We'll talk to you soon. Soon. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.